Hey everyone, my name is Elisa. Thank you so much for checking out my channel. If you're new here, please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. On today's episode, I am going to be giving you six tips on how to regrow your hair. And the reason that I'm making this video is because on my when video about uh, when the hair care product ruining my hair, one of the big questions in the comments was, okay, so what did you do after when destroyed your hair? So hopefully this video can answer some of those questions. So let's jump right in. All right, so my first tip is with regards to washing your hair. About washing your hair, I know that seems very elementary, but the trick here is that you don't want to wash your hair too infrequently, uh, and you don't want to wash it too frequently either. So washing your hair every single day isn't recommended. And based upon the texture of your hair, whether it's thin or thick, oily or dry, that all determines how frequently you should wash your hair. So the next time you get your hair cut, uh, talk to your a hairdresser and ask them about the type of hair that you have and how frequently you should wash it. If your hair is anything like mine, uh, I usually wash my hair every three to four days. On the fourth day, I really feel like I'm pushing it. Uh, so, but I do try to go as long as possible. And the other thing I should note here with regards to washing your hair is that dry shampoo isn't really that great for your hair. So if you are addicted to dry shampoo, which I know some of my girlfriends are, uh, you want to definitely mitigate a little bit of that. So maybe only use it like once a week instead of using it every day, for example. So tip number two really speaks about how you are treating your hair after you are washing it. So something that is really important that you should try to do as often as possible is to let your hair air dry. You might not have the time for that, um, but if you do, it is recommended to let it air dry because the heating tools can be very difficult for your hair. The other tip that falls into this category is watching your hairstyles. If you wear your hair very tight, whether it's up in a bun, or you have really tight braids, these are all things that can cause stress on your scalp and they can also lead to hair thinning. So as much as you can, try to use hairstyles that are lighter on the scalp, uh, that aren't really tight or pulling. Something else that I love is the wet brushes. I don't know if you've ever tried them before. Uh, they look like this and there are fake ones, so definitely make sure that you get a real wet brush. The wet brushes I love, they're also awesome for children or anyone with really knotty hair um, because they really do work very nicely through the hair. And I'll also say that if you have very knotty hair, it is recommended that you start from the bottom and kind of work your way up and really hold on to your hair, making sure you're not pulling at the scalp that much. Because again, any stress on the scalp can be very difficult uh, on the hair itself and definitely lead to thinning. Mm -hmm. My third tip is in terms of what you put in your body. The choices that you make with food are very important and you really want to focus on foods that are very rich in vitamins and nutrients. So things like fresh fruit and fresh vegetables, eggs and berries, uh, salmon is a great, great food to eat, um, spinach, avocado, Things like that that are a lot healthier for you are actually really good for your hair because they're high in different vitamins um, that will also help your hair grow. So definitely watch what you're eating and also make sure you're watching what you're drinking. A lot of people don't get enough water in their system. It's recommended that for males, they should drink 3.7 liters of water a day, whereas females should drink 2.7 liters uh, a day in water. So a secret I have, I actually use large mason jars, and this is what I drink out of all the time, and this just helps me kind of stay on track with my water intake. 
Tip number four, stress. Okay, this is a tough one because we're all stressed, especially with everything that's been going on in the world. It's very difficult not to be stressed. And I am a victim of it too, so I get it. But stress can also lead to thinning. So do everything that you possibly can to alleviate some of your stress. A great thing to do would be exercising or writing things down. Um, but something I really like that I found reduces some stress is meditating. And it's something that you have to practice, but it's something that I have found really can be beneficial. So watch your stress, if at all possible. Tip number five, haircut. Okay, so when you are going through something like hair loss, the last thing that you want to think about is cutting your hair. But the truth of it is, is that if you don't cut your hair, the dead ends, the straggly pieces, they are all just causing weight on your scalp and the rest of your hair. And that ultimately can also cause your hair to thin. So it is recommended that you get your hair cut every three to four months. And what you'll find is that the more often you're getting your hair cut and you're kind of staying with that frequency, the more your hair will grow and it will become healthier. So even if you're trying to grow your hair out, do take some time, get that haircut, and you will see benefits from that. This is my last tip for you. And it is a really important one because a lot of you have asked me what products I use. So I have a ton of different products here on the table in front of me that I wanna show you. So the first one I wanna start with is actually my head and shoulders. I know it's crazy because head and shoulders is for dandruff. Um, I have very sensitive skin. If you've watched any of my videos, I probably say that almost every single time when I talk about products, but my skin is so sensitive. And in the summertime or in the winter time, it can get really finicky and it can get itchy. Uh, and that's actually why I started using head and shoulder shoulders. But the thing that I love about head and shoulders is it has this uh, Perinthian zinc probably not pronouncing that properly, but you'll see that right there. And this particular type of zinc is very, very good on the scalp. So not only do I use this to help alleviate some of the itchiness, um, but it's also very good for hair thinning. I have also been playing around with different hair care products that have been known to help with thinning hair. The first one I tried was Nioxin. There's different numbers based on your hair care needs, and these are actually very large bottles. You don't have to buy them this big. They, they do make smaller ones. Um, but based on whether your hair is color treated or if you have light thinning or um, a lot of thinning, there's different numbers that you can use. So I tried number three. I used it for uh, probably like seven or eight months, and I did find some success with it. So I do recommend trying out Nioxin. Just make sure that if you do purchase it, you purchase the one that is specific to your hair need. I've been using this for the last three or four months. It's called Monet. It might also be called Monet. I don't know. Uh, but I call it Monet because I think it sounds prettier. This is a product that you're not going to be able to find in stores. You actually have to know somebody that sells it. But so far, I have loved this product. And again, this is another product where you have to let your sales representative know what your hair goals are and what you've been struggling with because they will pair you with the appropriate shampoo and conditioner. So... This one that I have here, this is the Intense Repair, uh, and I really like it. I've had a lot of success with it. I can feel my hair starting to grow back a little bit more, so I'm very excited about it. And the other product that they sell is this Intense Repair Treatment, which is a hair serum. It's actually sprays directly on your scalp. 
And so when you get out of the shower before you dry your hair or let it air dry, uh, you just spray it directly in pieces in areas that you think are thinning. So I usually hit, you know, in here, maybe up here in the back a little bit. And um, I love this product too. So, so Monet has been in my books right now as something that I'm using and praying it works. And so far I've seen pretty good results from it. I also am a huge fan of um, treatment masks, conditioning masks. I think these are very, very important, especially if you have dry hair or if you have any type of like um, coloring in your hair, whether it's highlights or, or full head, whatever it is. So these are just a couple of the products that I have been using that I really like. I have tried so many of these hair masks. But these are just two that I personally love. So this is the Moroccan Gold Series Intense Hair Care Treatment Mask. And it's intense care for dry and damaged hair. And then this one here is the Nelson J. Beverly Hills Moisture Healing Mask. So you could check that out too. And both of these products, you're just going to put into your hair uh, almost like conditioner and leave them in for a while. Typically, with any really good conditioner or anything like this, you should allow, um, you should actually tail dry your hair a little bit beforehand. So just get your tail, um, get excess water out of your hair and then put it on because it helps the product stick a little bit better. Another product uh, or another must have, I think, is leave-in conditioners. So of course, you're always gonna use the It's a 10. I'm sure you've heard of that. Uh, it's a 10 is a great product. It's been around for a while now and I, I've always loved it. So it's a great product. But if you're not a huge fan of It's a 10, there's a couple other ones I really like. There's the AG which is really good, the AG Hair Care. And that's uh, fast food. And uh, again, this is the leave-on conditioner. And then I also really like this one too, which is the Damage Remedy. And again, these are leave-in treatments. So you just put them in your hair and, uh, and you leave them in. You don't have to worry about it. So I really like, really, really like these products. The other thing is, if you are not gonna let your hair air dry, then you're going to use a styling tool, a heat tool. And if you're going to do that, you always want to use heat protectants because these things are not good for your hair. So two that I really like in particular, again, this is a Monet product. This is the blowout cream. And I really like it because it helps definitely make your hair smoother. And in fact, I've actually found that it does cut down the drying time too. And again, it, 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 um, really protects your hair against the heat. So that's awesome. And I also love this one too. This is a styling cream that also protects from heat and it does help create shine as well. So both of these things you would put on damp hair and you would use before using a blow dryer or a curling iron or anything like that. So Please, if there's anything that you can do, protect your hair from the heat. And then last but not least, the final product I wanted to show you is this really cute and cool massaging tool. Massage on your scalp is something that is so important when it comes to hair thinning, hair loss, and just overall, you know, care for your scalp. If your scalp is not cared for, you are going to see those results in your hair. So this little tool, this is by a company called Vanity Planet, and I actually think I bought it off um, Anthropology a while back. But what's cool is that it's waterproof, and so you can bring it in the shower with you, and there's a couple different settings to it. So you just turn it on, and I like to work in a circular motion to massage the hair. Now, you don't really need this fancy tool to massage your hair, uh, you can simply just use your hands. And if that is what you're going to do, do spend some time in the shower to massage your hair because it really will help. It will help 
kind of open those follicles up, relax them a little bit, uh, you know, help with any inflammation that you might have. So definitely take some time to massage your scalp. And I think it can be really rewarding, uh, especially after a long, stressful day. So do take some time for yourself. All right, everybody, so that is my six tips on how to regrow your hair and how to prevent thinning hair, especially after something as dramatic as I went through with my when incident. I will say that before you do anything, if you're really scared about hair loss, please do go and talk to your doctor. Make sure that you don't have any deficiencies or anything like that. Uh, I know we talked a little bit about vitamins in foods. There's also vitamins that you can take like biotin to help promote your hair growth. Uh, I have actually tried sugar bear hair vitamins and didn't really have much success from them. My girlfriends rant and rave about prenatal vitamins. I haven't tried that. Uh, but there's a lot of other products I do want to try. I know one of them is called Vegamore Grow Hair Serum. If you've tried that or if you've tried any products that make your hair grow or you've had success with, please let me know in the comments because I love trying new products. So definitely leave a comment. Let me know what you think. I hope this video helps in some way. And for anyone who has gone through the same one experience that I have, I just want you to know that I'm here for you and you're not alone. And I know that doesn't help much, but you know, you're, I have your back. So um, if you ever want to just chat about your experience or leave some tips and tricks that you've had success with, please do uh, leave me a comment. I always really appreciate hearing from you guys. And in the meantime, stay safe, stay well. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you have a great day. And don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. See you soon.